Um, when it comes to those 24-hour operations at ports, how significant is this? Does it need to be expanded, or is it just the flexibility and the policy focus that will make a difference? So I'm not sure whether this will fully alleviate the pinch point. I, I would say that coming from the electronic side of things, uh, I'm finding more and more often that I'm not talking about chip shortages, though that's still clearly an issue. When I'm talking with companies, they are talking about difficulties moving equipment, moving components that they need to produce that equipment from point A to point B, and, and anything that can be done uh, to alleviate issues uh, with shipping, with cargo, with freight um, would be great in terms of, of helping companies get the products they need to consumers. Bloomberg has learned that Apple would take a hit when it comes to those production targets of iPhone 13s. What are you seeing in the Asia supply chain picture right now that could hint at the possibility of more pain to come? So uh, for, for some time, uh, there have been a shortage of particularly uh, semiconductors made on older production equipment. Uh, the problem is that the equipment suppliers, uh, they've all moved on to newer process equipment, uh, which makes sense. Um, having said that, uh, there are a number of components that are still made on these older processes. Um, there's not really more equipment to be had. Um, and that just is creating pain points uh, for every producer of uh, electronics equipment. Um, it's hard when you can't get, a, a, so we're talking about oftentimes 10 cent, 20 cent parts, um, and they aren't typically viewed as, as being that important in the scheme of things. The problem is when you can't get those parts, you can't make that PC, you can't make that, that handset. Doesn't sound transitory, what you're saying. What, what could be, you know, pardon the pun, a circuit breaker here? Um, I, so I, I think the problem is that you just need to bring more uh, foundry capacity online. So there's got to be the ability to produce more components. Um, the issue is that companies are chasing moving targets. So particularly when you think about your 5G handset, uh, Taiwan Semi will tell you that it's 30 to 40 percent more semiconductor content. Uh, I've talked with other people who said that that's more like 50 percent. Uh, and if you have a millimeter wave modem, then the number is even higher. And so as we continue to transition to 5G, and I don't think anyone's going to step back and say, no, we're not going to build 5G phones anymore. We're going to ship back to 4G. That supply chain just takes more electronics content and so it's literally just bringing on new equipment um, and the foundries um, and manufacturers they have plans to bring that equipment on it just takes time so second half of next year 2023 2024 there's a lot of capacity coming on but there's not a lot of relief until that point right because yeah, you, you can't sort of bring on foundry capacity regardless of ambition overnight right uh, in the meantime, we've got other issues. We have an energy, an energy crisis. We have a power crisis in China. Uh, we potentially have, you know, wild weather elements as well in Taiwan. Should we be watching some of these factors more closely? I, I, I think you have to. Uh, the problem is, I, I was talking to one of my friends who runs a, a, a company that makes headsets, and he was saying, you know, I'm worried about this, but my problem right now is logistics. I, I can't get my products into the US because they're just getting stuck on containers. And I don't know when they're going to show up. And so it, it's something to worry about, but people can't get a good handle on, uh, say, what the implications of power outages in China might be because they've got so much more to worry about that's impacting their, their business right now.